You must excuse me. I've grown quite where I... This hasn't been easy, I know. But you've learned a lesson. A lesson in honesty. Honesty to yourself and honesty to others. That lesson will stand you in good stead all your life. I, I think we've all learned a good lesson. I've always heard that honesty is the best policy. Now I'm catching on to why that's so, and why that's so, and why that's so, and why that's so. Greetings, dear listeners, and welcome to yet another premium episode of the Tales from Astlantis podcast. I am your host, Curly Tlapoyawa, here with... Tlacateca. That's me. That's you. <laughs> so tonight we're going to switch things up a little bit. It's a premium episode. I'm sitting here. I'm I'm sipping on some JD. What do you got there? Tequila. I just got this for my birthday recently. Oh, happy birthday, man. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, you got to keep it real, man. <laughs> you hear that? So what would you do for your birthday? Uh, well, you know, just really hung out with the family. Um, had dinner over at my folks, uh, my parents, yes. my sister, um, wife and daughter. And, uh, you know, just didn't really feel like going anywhere. You know, just wanted to chill. And it was a beautiful day and had dinner at the house and we hung out in the backyard and, and just chatted and reminisced on good old times. That's cool, man. Well, happy and birthday, then, yeah. but I should say that the night before, uh, so that was Saturday, Friday night. Uh, there was an event here locally in Dallas at the Dallas Museum of Art where um, they were celebrating Selena's birthday, which she happens to share the same birthday as I. April nice. 16th. And so I'm part of the Dallas Mexican American Historical League. I'm the vice president. Uh, I just recently was elected to that position. So I've only been in, in, in the position for a couple of months. And so part of the duty uh, of as being in the executive board and, and, and you know, representing uh, the organization, um, the DMA reached out to us and asked us if we wanted to set up a table for this event Friday night. It's something that they do like once a month. They call it pop pop art or something, pop of art or something. And so they have like a theme and every month it changes. And so for the month of April, they decided to go with, with Selena. And so we had a table set up. And, and so we, we were there until about eight o'clock from five to eight. It, was, it went on until nine, but we started you know, closing up shop around eight o'clock and you know the the numbers were dwindling and we're like okay i'm getting hungry and we decided to go check out a restaurant in downtown that's been open for a while but we hadn't really been to it and uh it's over in the touristy part of downtown and uh, sure enough it was touristy so i'm not gonna drop any names but and the food was decent it wasn't bad but it was just like eh, maybe this wasn't such a good idea but we took some pictures <laughs> It was fun. It was still fun. <clears throat> what are the touristy parts? There's the uh, well. The, so you have West End several. Or... Yeah. Well, the West End has been dead for a long time. They're really? trying to bring it back. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's been pretty dead for a very long time. And then there was the other part more towards downtown that I'm probably thinking of. Well, the one that's more going towards the east end is Deep Ellum. Maybe Deep that's Ellum. What that's yeah. what I was thinking of. That's still that's still a very a popular area um, and. A lot of restaurants, bars, uh, clubs, and and uh, a lot of venues, and so. But we went in, more towards the south, the south end of downtown, um, over near the uh, the convention center. And um, there's a new hotel that opened up a few years ago called the Omni. It's very popular with uh, a lot of the uh, the tourists and a lot of the conventions because it's right next adjacent to the convention. And so sure enough, you know, I mean, you go there on a Friday night and then there's usually a lot of uh, convention, con convention, yeah. your crowd. And, and so, but it was, it was decent. Yeah, we had a decent time. So. That was my weekend. That was my birthday weekend. So I can't nice. complain. I spent it with my family and we had a great time. That's cool, man. Well, salud. Saludcita. I'm just going to get slowly inebriated throughout the night. Get wasted. <laughs> well, we just took, we being you and I, just took a little road trip through 
Texas. And uh, we went, I flew in on, I think it was Friday I flew in. Right. And you picked me up. We went and got some glamour shots done in the oh, park. Oh, that's right. Shout out to Felipe. Yeah, shout out Felipe. Thank you so much for the photos. They turned out great. And then we went to that uh, that art exhibit, the Printing the Revolution oh, art exhibit. The Eamon Carter Museum in Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. I hadn't been back to Fort Worth since I lived there. So that was it interesting. It was like 20 years, right? Yeah. More yeah, 20, 21 years, 20 years. 20, something like that. That's a long time. But it was interesting to see uh, Fort Worth again. Cowtown. But the... Uh, where the West begins. Where the West begins. <laughs> and the, the neighborhood I lived in was called White Settlement. So. That's right. <laughs> you pick them just right, don't you, Curly? <laughs> well, what was funny is it was all Mexicano and um, Asian. That was like the neighbor, the makeup of the neighborhood at the time was okay. all Mexicanos and Chicanos and Asians. So, is that where we used to get together on Sundays and mm -hmm. have our groups? Uh, was a Nawat group and yeah, we had a Nawat group, a history group. Yeah, it was. Those were good times, man. Shout out to Los Mariachis in Fort Worth if they're listening. You know, give us a holler. Yeah, shout out show. to uh, Los Nosticos. Oh, that's right, Los Nosticos. <laughs> man, used to show up. <laughs> It that just kind of cool. started showing up one day out of the blue, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> they were like, like, we heard you're giving Nahuatl lessons in yeah, history. Yeah, we're here for the Nahuatl lessons. And like, okay, come on in. All right. right on. They were cool. Um, I, I don't remember the husband's name, but he was Me there either. when we moved. And you were there too. And yeah. helped us uh, load up the U-Haul. That's right. So Man. shout out, Nosticos. Los Nosticos. So that uh, that art exhibit was really interesting. It was very cool. The tour guide <laughs> that uh, was leading the tour, <laughs> we were not on the tour, just to be clear. There was a, a tour going on, and it was just interesting uh, hearing this uh, non, let, let's just, yeah, let's just say a non-Chicano talking about Chicano art history and Chicano history in general, right? Because they were asking him questions like, yeah. what does this mean? Yeah. And my ears would prick up like, yeah, what does that? What do you think that means? Do tell. <laughs> I mean, he got, so, I mean, in general, he he did a decent job. Yeah. But, but yeah. there was a few things that were like, hmm? Yeah. Well, he read the book, I'm sure. If yeah. you're going to give the tour, you got to read the book, right? Or go through right. some sort of training i would imagine and then we uh we went back to your place i got to meet the fam which was very cool i had never met your family before that's so right yeah that was dope and then we just packed up and we headed down down to uh san marcos down to the valley And that was a cool drive. We uh, we passed by a bunch of Buckies. The thing that got me with that drive, though, was the amount of anti-vaccine billboards that I saw. You know, I wasn't paying attention, but tell us more about that. So we passed a few. We I counted at least three, three or four, and they all had the same message. It was like a, a, a syringe, you know. I remember the was, syringe. Supposed to be that. the vaccine. Right. But on the top, it said, don't be bullied. It's oh, your choice. Right. So all right. of a sudden, all these right wing Texans are pro choice all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> it's my body. Uh, so that was interesting just to see, like, I don't know who funded those, but there were there were a few and they were well done. Like they were well made. You know, mm -hmm. they, they put the graphic design. It wasn't cheap. It wasn't like some kid using you know, uh, Photoshop the, or something. What's, what's the free version of Photo Photoshop? Yeah, uh, what is that called? Canva. Canva. It wasn't like it wasn't like some fifteen-year-old kid using Canva. Like these were legit billboards, and they must have been expensive. And there were a lot of them. So just get vaccinated, folks. Goddamn. Right. Then we got to San Marcos at. It was already kind of late, right? It was. It was late. Yeah. So we checked in. It's about a three and a half hour drive from from Dallas to to San Marcos. I mean, if you're if you're going at a steady rate, if you're doing the speed limit, 
might take you a little bit longer. Um, just saying. <laughs> So we checked into the to the the hotel, and then in the morning we uh, we met with the uh, individuals from the uh, the Miyakan Garza band of the Coahuiltecas, which was very cool. And this is your first time meeting them, right? Yes, it was my first time meeting uh, Dr. Garza and Maria, his wife, and it was really cool, man. I'm, I'm glad I got to experience that. Yeah, it was, it was, um, this was my second, um, um, I mean, let's go ahead and say it. We went down there to, to participate in the repatriation ceremony that, um, that the goddesses have been conducting for a while now. I mean, as those of you that listened to the podcast with Dr. Garza might recall some of the things that he was saying, I mean, they've been doing this for close to 40 years. But as far as like uh, in San Marcos, uh, at the cemetery that was donated by the city of San Marcos for the ICI, for the Mia Cangarza, um, this is, I want to say, either the third or fourth repatriation, but this was my second one. The first one that I attended, that I was a part of, that I, I helped, um, um, you know, reinter the remains was the weekend right before or the weekend as things were, were shutting down for the lockdown back in 2020. Uh, that's, we were down there. It was myself and Selena, my wife and my daughter. And uh, it was, it was a bigger crowd because, you know, we were just entering the lockdown. We were keeping yeah. our distance. I remember, you know, uh, a lot, you know, Maria, especially, and, and uh, some folks were being cautious because, you know, of, no one really knew what to expect. It was early on. It was, you know, we, we were all, it was a different world back then. I mean, think about yeah, it. Yeah, for real. Think, think about everything that's gone on since then. It was, you know, so, but, so that was a, the first uh, ceremony that I had attended in person uh, for repatriation. And so this is, this was the second one. And, um, you know, they, um, they specifically asked for you, you know, they wanted you to, they asked me if you'd be interested. I said, I don't know. I'd have to ask her and see, because I know that you're a busy person. You have your day job and you have all this other stuff that you do. And I wasn't sure if you would even have the time to, um, you know, take a whole weekend off and take this trip to Texas to go do this specific thing. You know, it's, and, and it meant a lot to me. Thank you for doing that, Curly. And I think, I'm pretty sure it meant, it meant a lot to the guards, especially Maria, you know, and, and Mario, because they, you know, they've, this is the first time, first time that both of you have met. And, um, but they, they know about you. They've known about you for a very long time. And uh, Dr. Garza, you know, he's, he read your book, you know, The We Will Rise back when it first came out 20 something years ago. And, and he's told me that, that he really liked what you had to say because, so the things that you say in the book were things that he and others had already been sort of mm -hmm. advocating for down in central Texas and South Texas for a very long time, you know, going back to the eighties and stuff. And so to see someone like yourself publish a book advocating for Chicano indigeneity, like that meant a lot to them. And so the, the, I think, I think they're, they're, they're grateful, you know, for, for the fact that you accepted and plus, you know, with your expertise as an archaeologist, that comes in handy, especially uh, as you could tell from our experience, you know, you helped us out a lot in, in determining, maybe you can talk a little bit about the, uh, about the, the remains and the bundles and, and how we were able to discern that there, there were more remains there than, than were initially mm -hmm. thought, right? Yeah, yeah there was um, remains... Um... There were two children uh, with adults, so that was that was interesting. I mean, the whole experience was very um, it was deep, you know. That was some yeah. heavy shit. It was very heavy. It was impactful, and uh, it was powerful just to to be part of that. And you know, like holding ancestors in your hands and caring for them, and and you know, doing what we did to take care of them and, and put them back in the ground. That was, that was some heavy stuff that, that, that's something that never leaves you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was very cool. The, uh, you know, the, the ceremony with geez, the, the whole ceremony, I mean, it was like three ceremonies, but 
they were it was like one large ceremony that just kept going and it was it was pretty awesome yeah it kind of reminded me of those ceremonies um that we attended in the past that some of which we've talked about in in the podcast um it was similar in nature where it begins the night before the day before and then it carries on throughout the night and then the next day you're you, you think you're done with the ceremony but it's still going on <laughs> yeah yeah for sure you know it's, it's like it was something it was i mean it wasn't the same but it was similar to that you know like this experience of uh, of having to go through this process over over a number of days because of the circumstances right i mean this was a closed ceremony it, it was only a handful of us that that were asked to attend because of um COVID protocols, um, you know, the Garces are up there in age and, and they're taking care of themselves and protecting themselves. And, and you know, and so it, it was reasonable that it was just going to be, you know, a few of us and that the ceremony was going to be truncated. It wasn't going to be a complete ceremony like it should have been, uh, like, like they've done in the past. But I think that, you know, considering the circumstances, this was, uh, it was adequate for, for what needed to happen. Yeah, and, and, and it was done in a good way, right? It was done mm -hmm. in a good way, and and um, you know, the whole process of, you know, receiving the boxes from the archaeologists that work for the for the government, and then also I think having a BLM archaeologists, BLM, right? The Bureau of Land Management, and then they had also um, I don't know if we want to say this, uh, but they had uh, FBI, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, a representative from the FBI came yeah. to um, more or less because, I mean, it was all part of a big, you know, and I don't want to get into what what the operation was that resulted in this repatriation. Yeah. But the FBI was involved and people wound up in prison. So Exactly. And justice exactly. was uh, and so really I think, served. I, I think the FBI were there just to make sure that, you know, to conclude, you know, for their final report to say, we when we started this report... You know, we went through X, Y, and Z, and then we saw it to its conclusion where we mm -hmm. we um, brought the remains to to the appropriate uh, channels, and, and and we we saw the the remains uh, arrive at the at the appropriate conclusion. Mm -hmm. So that, that I mean, they they needed to be there just for that yeah. reason. Yeah, and they were also very respectful, right? And um and and let it be, and they let it known at the very beginning, like if I if I can't be here, I'll leave right now, no problem. You know, so and the Garces, they're you know they're very accommodating, and and you know they they're like no, sure, go ahead and stay, You're, that's fine. There's something nothing wrong with that, and so I mean you know so that was that was uh, yeah, like you said, it was a very impactful um, ceremony, and a very impactful series of events that that um you know. We're probably going to be doing more of this. I don't know um, how you feel about it, um, if you feel up to it. But I mean, at least on my end, um, now that I've assumed the position as, as director of repatriation for the ICI, you know, I'm going to be doing more of this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit versed on NAGPRO, like, like the very basic stuff. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like I'm going to have to really get deep into the, the weeds of, of it all and, and study more cases and things like that. Just so that if, if I ever need to, you know, make an argument uh, for remains, yeah. at least I'm prepared uh, to well, a there's certain a, degree. Well, there's a good intro um, workshop that the National Park Service has online. It's like two hours long. It's two parts but I'll send you the link. Okay. It's, uh, it's free. You just, just watch this this presentation. Right. But they go through a lot, and it's it's really useful. And doesn't the Association for American Indian Affairs also have, I mean, that's one of the major things mm -hmm. that they work on is repatriation affairs. And I think they also have workshops on, on their end that we can yeah, talk to if necessary. For sure. You have been listening to a sample of a premium episode of Tales from Astlantis. For a mere $3 a month, you will get access to our premium content every two weeks, as well as to the ever-expanding library of premium episodes. So visit TalesFromAstlantis.com and click Go Premium. Thank you for listening. 
Stimo i Tasse.